Thank you. Senator Ossoff. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and thank you for convening this hearing today. It is a tragedy that we have to hold it. And evidence of the catastrophic incompetence of the Trump administration that the U.S. Senate is reduced to holding hearings to affirm that, yes, clinical research into childhood cancer is worth investment. A young woman came into my office, uh, Ms. Stenson, just a few weeks ago and explained to me that she had stage four colorectal cancer, three children, and the clinical trial in which she'd been enrolled was paused. So those three little kids may now lose their mother. For what? Why? What's the, what's the constituency for this? Who, who out there in the American public is sitting at home demanding that we shut down cancer research and Alzheimer's research? We're gonna pay for this not just in lives and children's lives right now, but we're gonna pay for this for a century. Irreversible damage has already been done, and it's an outrage. And I hope that this hearing demonstrates that there's bipartisan rejection of these policies here in the United States Senate, and I hope that we'll follow up this hearing with real action. And Ms. Stenson, I, you know, I've got a three and a half year old little girl at home, and thank God that your little girl is alive. For every parent can, can understand when you hold your precious, innocent, kind child and you fear the most intense fear that something could happen to them, to think that American parents with children who have cancer now don't know whether they can enroll that child in a trial because maybe there's a way to save that life, it's devastating. So thank you for being here and bringing your sweet little girl. Thank you for sharing your testimony with us. I have here a statement for the record from Emory University in Georgia that includes the following statements. Quote, this research has contributed to significant advancements in treating diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, infectious diseases, and cardiovascular conditions. Federal support for biomedical research is essential. Cuts or stagnation in research funding jeopardize these efforts and could have far-reaching consequences for both patients and communities. Even a short interruption of research funding could set back scientific progress for decades. We urge Congress to continue prioritizing bipartisan investment in biomedical research. And Madam Chair, I'd like to ask consent to enter that into the record. Would that object? Mrs. Stenson, my, my understanding is that Charlie's participation in, in clinical trials saved your daughter's life. Is that right? Yes. And because of, of what you've experienced and what you've been through in your advocacy, I would imagine that you've come into contact with other families similarly situated whose children are only alive thanks to clinical trials. Yes. I'd like to ask, at the end of the day, sir, forgive me, the multi-decade potential impact of this war on medical research. Talk about the long run, please, sir. I can tell you that um, in the next few months, we're gonna determine, we have, we're sitting at a crossroads. We are at this moment of extreme opportunity, and you've heard it from all of the scientists at this table about what's already been accomplished and what could be accomplished. Or there's another path, and that path is this path of the leaked pass-back budget. That budget, I hope it's wrong, but it says a 44% cut to NIH funding. And we can talk about administrative costs, we can talk about everything else. That level of funding means that we aren't in a race anymore. It means we aren't in a race anymore. And what that means is there may be cures for disease. There may be, there may be uh, investment made in China and elsewhere that leads to, uh, to some things happening that we would want. We're not going to be able to set the standards. We're not going to understand access. We're not going to have, uh, we're not going to have the ability to even catch up because the benefits will accrue to some other place. And, but what it really means for patients is that we can't drive the priorities. We can't say pediatric cancer. We can't say Alzheimer's. We can't say Parkinson's. Uh, we will have lost that race. And these, these early career scientists that are 
really in moments of, of panic right now, they are going to be determinative of whether or not we have a generation of scientists to replace the ones that we have today. This is not just a five-year problem. It's a 10-year, 20-year, 30-year problem that just it becomes a, not a virtuous cycle, but the opposite. It becomes a cycle on the way to a downward slope that we can't pull out of. In Germany, 100 years ago, if you wanted to do chemistry, you spoke German. And in the U.S., you spoke German. You had to learn German. 20 years from now, what is going to be the language of science? Is it going to be English? I don't know that for certain at this moment. We're at a crossroads to figure that out. It's a historical moment. Well put, and it's urgent. Thank you all. Thank you, Madam Chair.